Hey guys, it's Fishes, and today I'm going to be showing you how to put in a new electrical connection on it and have a cord in case one of them gets damaged. Or in my case, I'm doing a do-it-yourself project where I had uh, two work lights and I'm going to uh, put new ends on them. Alright, so go to the store and get yourself a new plug in. This one was like almost $3, I think. Uh, it has the ground because my original cord used ground, so make sure you match your original cable spe specs with uh, whether it has ground or not. And make sure you get one that has some kind of anchor for strain relief on the back so you don't have the yank, uh, the cable get yanked out. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the cord that we're going to get. If you were repairing a cord or something, chop the end off and get a nice clean end where there's no damage. In my case, I had uh, no end on this to chop off, so I need to strip the outer layer off and expose the wires inside. I'm going to, for this thick outer layer, I'm going to go ahead and use a sharp pocket knife and just carefully go around it to expose the wire. And I'm just going to... After I made that cut, I'm going to use my wire cutters to kind of help me get that jacket off of there. Go ahead and take your time and do this slow because I'd rather cut too little and have to go back than to cut too much and actually cut into my wires. Because that's the one thing you do not want to do is actually cut into your wires. So I've got the three wires that were inside the cable exposed now. Uh, one thing I did with the original cable that was on here is I already did the same thing. I exposed the wires and it has the original end. And the reason I did this is I took my multimeter and tested that out to make sure I know exactly which connection is which wire because you don't want to get those messed up on the final product. That would probably be the biggest mistake you could make. So I'm just going to use some wire strippers now and strip these back. Expose about a third of an inch enough to get it onto the new connections without leaving too much extra wire. Okay, so once you've got your three wires stripped and ready to go, make sure you slip your, your boot on here. That's very important. If you forget to do that and you continue onward, you will have to undo everything. And now it's time to start putting this together. It's just got screw terminals. They are color-coded where they're supposed to be. Green is the ground. you got the shiny side and you got the gold side. But we went ahead and just manually measured out everything just to be sure in case the cable that the wires are coming from are not proper. You never know. You might get something from uh, like China or something that's cheap and it's not proper. Alright, that's torqued down nice and good and it doesn't have any exposed or frayed wires. I'm going to move on to the other one. The top right side for me is the white cable. All right, now that you're done, you know, take a moment to examine it. Make sure, you know, give everything a nice tug. Make sure it's all secure. Nothing's frayed, sticking out, looks like it shouldn't be. Get it ready for the final assembly. For the final assembly, you're just going to slide your boot up. Now, you can do one of two things here. If, you, if you're really good about where you cut the uh, outer sleeve off, the outer jacket, go ahead and secure the face first and then secure the uh, strain relief second. But if you have cut it back a little bit too far, you can kind of squeeze this in a little bit. So go ahead and secure your strain relief first, and then kind of squash this in there and tighten it down. So I'm going to do the face first, since I did a good job with that. All right, face is in, and it uses three screws to fasten back down. So let's just get these screws in there, get this finished. Tighten them down snug, but don't over-tighten anything. It's not going to have to hold a lot of force. You just want it to be secure. All right, there we go, that's on. Last thing is just to get that strain relief in case this cable ever gets snagged or yanked. We don't want it to uh, get messed up. All right, now it's a balancing act. Um, tighten down one side and then tighten down the other, just kind of rotate back and forth. You don't want to over tighten down one side and then cause some kind of imbalance. This you do want to get tight because you're not going to hurt the wire by squishing it. And the tighter it is, the more secure and uh, protected it is. Protected it, it is against strain. That is on there. There you go, guys. It's going to work just fine. And now with this 
work light, I have a nice little customizable little cable on it, and I don't have to worry about using the default uh, cable that came with it, which was a shared cable, so I can actually independently use these lights now. So I hope you guys found that tutorial useful, and this is Vicious, and I'll see you guys next time.